everybody quest wise back here again well august is over which means rpg a day 2017 is now finally wrapped up i still have a couple questions i need to answer but i haven't i got i got sort of derailed i got sort of sidetracked i've been working a lot to end the summer uh, this is Labor Day weekend, so summer is officially over here in Michigan, and uh, that means that most of the everybody goes back to school and the, the tourists all leave. I live in a town where uh, tourism is a huge thing for us in the summertime, and fall and winter are our times to relax, and in my case, to gain. And so I got a little derailed, I got a little sidetracked, uh, but now I'm, I'm back on track now. Uh, so I'm welcoming September, my birthday month. Uh, I love the the autumn here in in northern Michigan. It's a beautiful time to live here. It's always beautiful to live here, but it's cooler here. The humidity's lower. Um, trees are beautiful in the fall. Um, but I get a little bit more time to do some gaming, and I've been I've been looking into a few new things. I, I find the older I get, the more um, uh, the, the 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 more mature I grow in my gaming thing. I find that I I really enjoy and I really respect game companies who give a full big experience and a deep and rich experience in their games I just uh, I have a couple of unboxings and and reviews coming up in the next couple of weeks probably next week or so I picked up a copy of um, Starfinder by Paizo I'm if, if you've listened to some of my videos before I think I've talked to a few of you out there about uh, I've always wanted a game of pure exploration. I want a game where you just go out and you explore, and the game is much more about exploring and diplomacy and sort of finding new spaces than more than combat. And I'm, I know that Starfinder is probably not. It probably kind of borders in the middle of those two things between like combat heavy and and exploration heavy. Um, but I've been doing a lot of research, been watching a lot of videos, been watching a lot, reading a lot of reviews, and. I, I'm 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 kind of thumbs up in the the Starfinder, even though I I've, I physically looked at the copy of the book, but I will soon own a copy and I'll give you my full review there and how I'm going to use it to play more of an exploration type of a game. I've also been sort of uh, in those nostalgic moods where I've been sort of looking back at older games that I've played before and some older games that I've never gotten a chance to play before. And one of those games that I finally took the bit the bullet and, and ordered a copy of is Rune Quest Classic, the the re the um, republished edition of second edition that they put out, uh, Chaosium put out a few years back. Uh, and so I I really, really, really love the system that Call of Cthulhu uses. The percentile system to me just seems very intuitive and it's one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of Palladium books and stuff. Uh, is because all their skills are, are percentile based and I've always thought that that was I've always found that percentile system to be very intuitive and very easy to grasp uh, it's also easy very easy to teach somebody you know so if you're you're teaching somebody how to play and you say you have a 45 percent chance of climbing that wall it just makes sense to them they, they can kind of gauge in their own head how that you know it's you know 50 percent is half of you know what anyhow I find it very intuitive, and the Rune Quest is where that sort of all began, from what I understand. Uh, but as soon as I get that, I'll be doing an unboxing video of that, as well as a full my full review uh, when I get through reading that as well. The reason I bring up Rune Quest and some of these older games is because I find that um, having watched reviews of other people who have played Rune Quest and, and who have done some great reviews, uh, the one in particular that seems to really kind of I keep watching a lot of his is, is Bud's RPG reviews. I try to put a link to the to the video below of the one I was talking about that it sort of sparked my thing. But it seems to me that RuneQuest had a very vivid, very detailed uh, cosmology and background and history to the game in game, not just of the game, but of you know in the game of the the world of Glorantha itself. And I find that really, really fascinating. I think that, you know, I'm sure Forgotten Realms did that in, like, second edition for, for AD&D, but it felt like the earlier editions, you were sort of, uh, there was a lack of that. You, if you wanted that, you had to kind of create it yourself. And I and I find that from watching some of these reviews that, that the Glorantha history is very, 
I'm not even sure what to call it. it I, I find it very uh, esoteric and strange. Uh, it reminds me a lot of, of like Michael Moorcock's Elric stuff. Lots of odd happenings and strange, you know, gods intervening with men and these strange quests and stuff. And I love that kind of stuff. I love that sort of pulpy, early, twisted, strange, awesome history. And so I, to bring that up to 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 just introduce something that I picked up a, a, a month or so back. And I, if you see my video on the Dark Eye, you know I'm a huge fan of the Dark Eye. The Dark Eye RPG. It's from Germany, and we just got the fifth edition here. It's now finally in English. And they've been cranking out a bunch of stuff for it. I've been trying to buy all of it if I can because I'm a huge fan. Um, I, I think the game is beautiful. But here's why, I, why what I wanted to bring up today is that uh, Dark Eye does these uh, these campaign paths um, that are very similar to like what Paizo does with their campaign paths and stuff as well. Um, but this is the first one. This is the Theater Nights number one. It's called the White Lake. And uh, they... What do they actually call it? They're, 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 it's the beginning of a campaign. So if you've done the adventure path thing from pa Paizo, then uh, you know exactly how this kind of works. Unlike the ones with Paizo, though, and unlike the Pathfinder stuff and, and probably Starfinder as well, too, these are so well done. These are so packed with information, and they're so well laid out, and they're so well... Uh, uh, created. Uh, I mean, even just the packaging itself is amazing. Now, these are twenty dollars a piece, nineteen ninety nine. That's what they retail for. Uh, you can kind of see in the video. I can see the light from my from my window over here, is sort of shining on it. You know, the, the some of the artwork is sort of it's a glossy cover where this is all of a matte kind of finish in the back and stuff. But what I really find fascinating about this, the layout of these are just they're gorgeous. They're really easy to read. But what I really appreciate about these is that for people who maybe are new to the Dark Eye or maybe even just new to role-playing, there are hints and tips in this on how to make your game even better and how to create such a depth and wealth of information and role-playing experience that you can possibly get. They weave that all. It's not just in the, in the Dungeon Master's Guide or the Game Master's Guide. It's in here as well, too. Every time a situation comes up that they want you to sort of like, you know, have the players experience a, a much more deep richness, it's in here. It tells you exactly how to do that. So, for instance, in the very beginning here, very front page, they use these kind of like chess symbols to, to uh, give you a hierarchy of uh, NPCs in the adventure. Uh, so... You know, the, the if you're using the pawn, if if the NPC in the in the uh, adventure has a pawn symbol next to it, it means that they the NPC doesn't appear in any other campaign setting. You can treat the NPC however you want. You can kill him off. You can make him an important figure, but he's not going to appear in any other published material. And so, feel free to kind of do what you want with him. Now, if you look at the queen, if you use the queen figure next to a thing it says this npc with this symbol plays an important role in future adventures so you don't want to screw around with them too much you want to kind of play them as written in here because they are going to show up later so if you kill them off you know if your players end up killing them off in this adventure um it's going to be a little awkward later you're going to have to do a lot more work because they do play a prominent role in some of the other stuff um and they give them like a little hierarchy in there as well too one of the other things i found very very interesting in fact, in the back here, there is a, a situation where you have to do some haggling, and it gives you, I should have marked this page, I apologize uh, before um, having to do this. So, um, yeah, there's a negotiation that goes on, and it gives you, um, I just had it a few minutes ago too, I'm so sorry about this. Uh, anyhow, there's a, there's a part where you have to do a, a pro, sort of prolonged negotiation. And it gives you in the text itself some ideas of how that you can role play that out. Do you want to do it purely role playing? Do you want to do it as a linked series of dice tests? Um, and it gives you a bunch of variations on how to make that a much richer uh, encounter rather than just saying like you roll a d20 and then 
yeah, he's going to go for it. You know, the haggling thing, the, the negotiation should be a sort of well role played out thing. It's a very important to the kind of the end of this mission and stuff as well. And, you know, it makes a much, a, a much more uh, prominent event in, than just rolling a die and moving on. So I thought that was a very interesting t uh, touch as well, too. There's also at the very back of this, I don't want to give too much of this away if you guys are going to play this, but you do encounter some goblins and they give you a little map of the goblin caves. Now, while this, the, while the Dark Eye tends to be more of a theater of the mind style play, uh, as opposed to some of the others, and I, uh, you know, other games I've seen out there like uh, Pathfinder, Starfinder tends to, a little bit miniature heavy as well. Um, uh, this one tends to be more of a theater of the mind thing. Uh, but to help you keep track, they give you a little clues onto this when you're fighting the goblins in this this cave system here. Uh, it gives you uh, it gives you a little um, uh, tips on to like to remind yourself and the other players what's going to going on. You take a d6 and you put it you know in room two or whatever, and you set it to the so the pips are at, at the side three facing up to let it remind you there are three goblins in this room and then there are two in another room and that kind of thing. And so it gives you nice little tips on how to keep the gameplay theater of the mind, but at the same time have some visual visual clues into what's going on. Um, the game, the the packaging itself is very beautiful, a very nice heavyweight paper. It's all full color throughout. There's some great great artwork. Um, I've, I've become a huge fan of Ulysses Spiel ever since I first encountered this game. If you haven't checked out my other video. On the dark eye, like I said, I'll try to put a link down below. Um, but uh, great, great stuff, and this really fills my my need for nostalgia and a, and a need for a very deep and rich history to a game. This game does have that. This game is 30 years old in Germany, and they've already built such a huge, huge uh, history behind all of this stuff. And we're just now slowly starting getting getting that here in the U.S. and stuff, or in any English-speaking country. Uh, so props to the guys over at Ulysses, guys and gals over at Ulysses Spiel and Ulysses North America for making this happen. And I look forward to grabbing all the rest of these as well, too, because they're just wonderful, wonderful things. And um, I, like, again, I said, like, we'll have a, some unboxings, some reviews of Starfinder coming up soon, and then some Rune Quest Classic as well, too. But until then, I'm Questwise. Great gaming. I'm out.